despite the technical underpinnings of our discipline. I think it's fair to say that mostly our learning is practical and pragmatic rather than academic. Sure, some kinds of progress comes from research, but mostly we seem to make progress by solving the problems in front of us and we learn from other people's practical experience of solving their problems that were in front of them too, usually their other practitioners. One way that people communicate these learnings is through conference talks. Conferences are a rich source of learning in software. So what makes a great conference talk and what are some of my favourites that I learned from? Oh, and I'll add a few tips along the way in case you are thinking of talking at a conference yourself. Hi, I'm Dave Farley of Continuous Delivery. Welcome to my channel. And if you haven't been here before, please do hit subscribe. And if you enjoy the content today, hit like as well. I'd like to begin as ever by thanking our sponsors, Equal Experts, Octopus and Specflow. They sponsor our channel, so please do support them in return by checking out the links in the description below. My brand new training course, Test Driven Development and Behaviour Driven Development, designed through testing, is out now. If you'd like to produce better designed, more flexible code with fewer bugs, then this is the course we'll, that will tell you how. This course will give you a better understanding of test driven development and behaviour driven development, and how they combine together to improve the quality of your code. The skills to write long-lasting tests that are resilient in the face of changes in the code and more job satisfaction and more time to build the software that you want to build. The skills that you will learn on this course are highly sought after and can enhance your job prospects too. I spent most of my career writing software rather than talking about writing it. A few years ago I started talking at conferences for a couple of reasons. First, the teams that I worked on had done some interesting things, and I thought that they might be interesting to other people too. And second, because I was asked to by my employers, they thought that this might help promote our teams as good places to work and so aid with recruitment, and it did. I've never really considered myself to be a great conference speaker, though naturally I've got better at it with practice over time. Early on, I remember my now friend Dave Thomas introducing me and my friend Martin Thompson to the audience at Yao with, they may not be the best speakers, but they know what they're talking about. We were actually pretty happy with that because we agreed. As the time went on, because some of the stuff that I worked on was interesting, I got asked to do more and more public speaking, which I suppose in some ways ended up with me here talking to you today. It also meant that I got to attend lots of different conferences all over the world. And a side effect of that is that I get to see a lot of different conference talks. There are lots of different kinds of conference talk and kinds of conference speaker. Some are just plain entertaining. I remember seeing Jim Webber at a conference in Australia a few years ago. He spent the first third talking, taking the mickey out of the Australians about their cricket, and the second third talking about Doctor Who. The last third giving a great talk on graph databases. OK, my recollection might be overdoing the cricket and the Doctor Who a little bit, but that's how I remember it. It was an excellent conference talk. Jim is a fantastic communicator and very funny in a grumpy British kind of way. I couldn't actually find a link to the talk that I just reminisced about here, but I've linked another of Jim's talks so that you can get a sense of what it is that I'm talking about. If you can explain complicated technical ideas clearly and be interesting and even entertaining at the same time, you'll do very well as a conference speaker. But that isn't the only route. I've seen too many slick commercial events to believe that it's just about presentation skills, with obviously rehearsed and auto cue driven presentations. These really don't work for me. I confess that I loathe the big annual bashes from the big companies that have been choreographed to within an inch of their lives. A good conference talk is about teaching you something, not really selling you something in my opinion. 
I once saw one of the most nervous human beings that I've ever seen stood on a stage at a big conference in London. The poor chap was clearly not enjoying himself. The process of his delivery uh, suffered as a result, but the talk was actually great. He was explaining some technology that, to be honest, I wasn't very interested in. I was killing time, but by the end, I wanted to try it for myself, and I, and I understood why. He understood the text so well that he explained it really clearly and with some pretty deep insights. So there are lots of different ways to approach this. But for now, let's start with some of my favourite talks. My criteria for these is mostly those that entertained me, made me think, or introduced me to new technology or ideas. The really great talks did nearly all of these things at the same time. As I said, there are different ways to be successful as a conference speaker. You don't have to be a great public speaker, as Dave Thomas pointed out. You don't always have to have very much to say. Some people are just fantastic speakers and can ju be just be entertaining. Some speakers overwhelm us with their cleverness and leave us feeling a little bit intim intimidated but impressed. Others can be funny, clever and insightful all at the same time. I confess... I like some of, of all of these, but I particularly enjoy the quirky ones. One of my all-time favourite talks is from Kristin Gorman. It's a short flash talk, but it very clearly and very amusingly demonstrates our over-reliance on other people's technology, often to very little practical advantage. The premise is professional chefs don't use cake mix, so why should professional programmers do the software equivalent? It's funny, but it also makes a really interesting point. When is it good to use the software equivalent of a cake mix, and when is it better to use natural ingredients and build your own thing? Christine demonstrates this by looking at one of the then popular, extremely popular maybe, ORM frameworks and how it resulted in much more code and much more complex code than the SQL equivalent it was meant to replace. The other talk that I love that springs to mind in this more quirky category is Brian Lyle's talk, Test All the F***ing Time. The first time I watched this I spent nearly the whole time laughing. Brian is another great presenter. He was making a point that is very close to my heart, which is, in case you missed it, test all the f***ing time. This is a fantastic talk. It is really funny all the way through. It starts with, in the beginning, there was Pearl, and continuously, remorselessly points out why we should test all the f***ing time. As well as reinforcing my prejudices, this is just fun to watch. Travelling around the conference circuit, you obviously get to meet people. One of the friends that I made along the way was Goiko Adzik. Check out our engineering room talk. It's very entertaining. Goiko is a great speaker. I could give you a top ten list of just his talks. But one of my favourites was this one, where he describes a number of ideas that I have since stolen from him. One is the idea of a hyperproductive team that turns out to have been hyperproductive in entirely the wrong direction. They were used to advertise Scrum at one point, an 800% increase in productivity. But it was MySpace, and nobody uses MySpace anymore. He goes on to compare this kind of roadmap that we sometimes see in software to this, which is a roadmap, and point out how much more useful the second kind is. Goiko then de describes his own experience of writing a game and using impact mapping to direct their work, using the practical equivalent of a real roadmap in this, in this example. I always go and watch Goiko if he's talking at a conference that I'm at, and never have been disappointed. I had a great privilege a few years ago to be on the same bill uh, with Goiko, Jeff Patton, Michael Nygaard and Gregor Hope. I'm going to call out some talks from all of them, because they're all great speakers. Jeff's talk on that tour isn't one that made my list. Jeff's talks are always great, but I remember seeing a version of his user story mapping talk 
uh, which really affected me and thinking that's a missing piece in the way that I think about software development. I'd struggled with organising user stories for several years by this point, but Jeff solved that problem and explained lots of other stuff too with his very product-centric focus. This presentation and the ideas that underpin it had a big influence on how I think about this part of the problem in software development ever since. Mike Nygaard gave a great presentation at this event uh, that we were at together. He talked about coupling in a talk simply called Uncoupling. I had known Mike for a few years at this point and always liked his work. His book Release It was fantastic, but his, this presentation made me more impressed by the clarity with which he thinks about things and expresses them. In this talk, Nygaard dissects the idea of coupling and explains it in really helpful ways. I think that the Nygaard model for coupling, as I called it when I quoted it in my engineering book, is a really valuable tool that helps us to understand the problems that coupling can present better and gives us useful ways to think about it and deal with it appropriately. This is important because coupling is inherent to what it is that we do in a variety of ways, and if we get it wrong, the results can be disastrous for software development. The last speaker on the roster for this mini tour was Gregor Hope. Gregor is another deep thinker who is nearly always worth listening to. When I joined ThoughtWorks in the early 2000s, I was at the time thinking of writing a book based on my previous experience at my previous employer of integrating big systems using an event mapping approach. I was musing on this when I heard about and read Gregor's book that sounded similar. Uh, which he'd just released, I decided that discretion was the better part of Valor and that his book was a lot better than mine would have been, so didn't get round to writing that. The talk that Gregor gave in the Singapore event was great. Um, I've often stolen from this one too. It was called Enterprise Architecture Equals Architecting the Enterprise. Uh, and in it, he explores the role of software architecture in big organisations. Gregor is brilliant on this topic and well worth paying attention to. Most of this talk, though, was based on his experience uh, working as chief architect at the German insurance giant Allianz. But Gregor has enough great real-world experience to be able to mine the lessons in any experience and enough perspective to explain them to the rest of us really clearly. In this talk, there are lots of great ideas. One that really resonated with me was the idea of using the reporting lines in an organisation to understand how that organisation perceives software development. If your IT function reports to the CFO, they will see it as a cost centre and be looking to outsource. If it reports to the CEO, then you're probably in a modern, fast-moving, innovative kind of organisation. Gregor's talks are always worth checking out, but this one really landed with me. That was a pretty good conference. Uh, I confess that so far I feel rather like I am name-dropping here. But great talks don't always come from famous people. One problem with that is that they aren't always recorded. I spoke at an internal conference a few years ago. Um, sadly, I can't recall the, the speaker's name, but, one, but he was the head of security for the software company that had organised the event. He demonstrated, with people's permission, how easy it was to hack Wi-Fi networks by live hacking the conference Wi-Fi and sending people messages from what somebody else's phone to, to, to their phones. It was a great talk, but sadly no recording that I can share. Another uh, event that didn't have a recording was an enthralling talk by the chief pilot of Lufthansa at the time, Robert Schroeder. His talk was called From Error to Failure, and is the best talk on safety critical systems that I've ever seen. But sadly, this too isn't available. He started by giving his analysis of the worst ever aeroplane accident, which happened in Tenerife when two jumbo jets collided on the runway and killed nearly everybody aboard both. He went on to point out the amazing statistic that in the year before this conference talk, in 2017, the equivalent of two-thirds of the population of the planet flew in commercial aircraft and nobody was hurt or killed. 
It was a great talk that showed that safety evolves sometimes through tragedy that highlights another point that you can make great interesting talks even if your topic is not directly related to software. Other talks that spring to mind in this category are space engineer Anita Sengupta's talk about uh, landing spaceships on Mars or anything she talks about really, or mathematician Hannah Fry asking question, the question, should computers run the world in how to be human in the age of the machine? More straightforwardly on the topic of software development, Another of my favourites is a talk by Eric Evans. I saw him give many versions of this talk over the years, but tackling the complexity in the heart of software is a fantastic talk, and Eric is a world expert on the topic of great software design. There are lots of interesting ideas in this presentation, and some of these ideas are really important to guiding us all to create better software. Speaking at conferences is not for everyone, clearly, but there are several advantages if you think it might be for you. One of the things that I really like is that it forces me to organise my thoughts better. In order to communicate to sometimes complicated ideas to other people, you have to understand them well yourself first. And the simple act of thinking about organising your thoughts so that you can communicate them deepens your own understanding. Nobel Prize winning physicist Richard Feynman used to say, if you can't explain something in simple terms, you don't understand it yet. Preparing a presentation helps you to organise your thoughts. The mistake that many people make, certainly the mistake that I made when I started out, was assuming that you must have a big idea first before you can, you, you can think of presenting it at a conference. Conference talk take all sorts of forms, and often the stuff that's really interesting are the things that are obvious and simple to you. Um, I would recommend that if you are interested in improving your skills in this area, start by doing some talks, short and formal if you like, but to teammates and friends in something that feels like a safe setting. For first conference talk, experience reports or descriptions of how you solved some gnarly problem are a good place to start. Personally, I'd avoid live coding as a first public talk. You need a fair bit of buffer of confidence to be able to manage that. There is lots to be said about the detail of creating a good talk, but I'd offer two simple pieces of advice. You can't afford to cram too much detail in. Try and only have a few, maybe one or two, key ideas that you aim people to leave the, the talk with. And try to make those ideas clear and repeat them a couple of times. Also, think about the narrative arc of your talk. There's an old joke about storytelling. It, it says, put a monkey up a tree, throw some rocks at him and then get him down. What this means is that first establish the problem that you're trying to demonstrate how to solve. Then show how bad the problem is, throwing the rocks at the monkey. And then, only then, demonstrate the solution. One more talk before I leave you. My co-author, Jez Humble, is a great conference speaker. He's done lots of great talks, but I really love this one. I suppose in part because, rather naturally, it so much mirrored my own thinking and experience. It's called, Continuous Delivery is Great, but it can't work for us. And the quotes are important around that. And it explains what it really means when people say that to us. And they say that to us both all of the time. Which is that their organisation is bad, their tech is bad, their people are bad, or maybe all three. What this really means is that people have given up trying to do a good job. They're really saying, we're terrible at software, but we can't be bothered to change. This talk is funny and true. As I said at the start, conferences are a great place to learn. Let me know some of your favourites in the comments. Thank you very much for watching.